folks, my name is Tom Vassell and I'd like to welcome you to Week in Review. This is a short video in which we take you through all the reviews we did over the past week and we tell you some quick thoughts on them. If you'd like to know more, you can go back and check out the whole video and watch it there. All right, let's get to it. Hey folks, this week I was able to take care of uh, three reviews and a couple other videos for you. And uh, this week, first of all, I was able to do a little card game, uh, of a action, simultaneous action selection card game where you're trying to find uh, different fragments of your reality and piece it together. It was called Entropy, a game I really enjoyed a lot at uh, three and four players, but five and six just get a lot, got a little too uh, chaotic. Uh, really, really good game, I think, for three or four players, but you'll have to make your own decision for those other player counts. So that's Entropy. I was also able to do a review on a game called Rome Rise to Power. This one came out of left field for me. I had no idea I was going to enjoy this game as much as I did. Gave it an 8 out of 10. Uh, so you need probably need to go check this one out if you're anything like me. Uh, it has set collection in it, kind of. It has uh, worker placement or dice placement, kind of like Kingsburg. It also has an area control mechanic where you're trying to uh, control different regions and the and different projects provinces in these regions. Really neat game. All of that in less than an hour, people. So it really plays well, really plays smoothly. Go check that one out. Rome Rise to Power. And I was also able to do a one. Uh, another card game, this one a drafting style game uh, called The Band is Even Better. It's a musically themed uh, drafting card game where you're trying to piece together uh, the best band and then take that band out on a world tour. You're, whole, you're trying to score the most points, uh, but it's a really neat mechanic. Enjoyed it a lot. Fortunately for me, the artwork just kind of tanked it. Then I was also able to play the internet in Memoir 44, so that was a live playthrough, me against all of you guys, and you may or may not have won. You gotta go watch the video to find out. Uh, then I was also able to do another Battling Brushes with Rob and I. We're doing Zombie Side Black Plague this month. And that is it for me. See you on the flip side. Hey, hey everybody, Z Garcia here. This week I reviewed three games. I reviewed Desert Island, which is a sequel to a game called Lifeboat. In this one, uh, you are trying to survive on an island. You're trying to gather up the most loot. There's someone you secretly love, someone you secretly hate. The game play is interesting and clever, but very American style. Lots of randomness in it. It is a bit over long, but I enjoyed it. I think it's a, it's a clever system, and it definitely lent itself to kind of role-playing and then laughing it up, that sort of thing. So I like that. Next up, six. This is a party game, a straightforward pick a category and write down answers and see if you match for some rounds or don't match for other rounds. Uh, as I said, really straightforward and clean. Not very innovative either, but I enjoyed it and it's something I'm going to be bringing along to parties, you know. And then lastly, Indigo here, which is a tile-laying path-building game. That's gorgeous, beautiful looking game, very quick, plays in about half an hour. And it's real clever because the, the main twist here is that sometimes you share places with the opponents. And so sometimes you want to get that gem to yourself, but sometimes you got to share it. Really love this game. And so there you have it. That's it for me. I'll see you next time. Last week, again, was a light week for me due to the powerlifting competitions, as well as next week's probably going to be very, very, very light uh, due to trying to just catch up with everything. Uh, but last week I did uh, Warm Pieces, and we took a look at the Battle of the Bulge. And I also did Battling Brushes with Sam, where we covered the zombies, uh, the runners, actually, and they came out pretty good, along with Sam's work. He was doing really, really well. So that was it for me. And until next week, I'm Rob Warren. We'll see you soon. Howdy, folks. This week, the family showed down and looked at a great family dexterity game named Coconuts. <laughs> what do you think of this game, Ness? Uh, this is my favorite game ever. <laughs> well, there you have it, folks. <laughs> Hello. This week has been a bit slow because I just moved into a new house and things need to settle down and boxes everywhere. But I did get to check out Aya from Acting Games or Blackrock Games. In this game you have domino pieces and you're, you're using those pieces to discover new uh, places, new animals and taking photos of a lot of things. And it's a cooperative game. So check it out, it's kind of fun, it's more of an activity than a game. I also got to check out King Chocolate, a game from Mayfair Games. In this game you are making nothing. You're just moving pieces around the board and giving points to one another. And uh, yeah, you can check out the entire review on my homepage here. And uh, yeah. 
it's not really for me at all. Okay, see ya. Hello everyone, we are Meeple Talk, and this week we reviewed Mission Red Planet. It's a space exploration game with a little bit of steampunk flair. In this game, over 10 rounds, you'll be launching astronauts on rockets to the Red Planet, which is Mars, in order to <laughs> get as many resources as possible. And sabotage each other. Yes. Mm -hmm. I thought this was a great game. Uh, it's very simple, simple mm -hmm. rules, and a simple layout, and a lot of fun. I give it an 8 out of 10. I also give it 8 as well. Come check it out. See you soon. See you later. Well, I had a week where I didn't give any negative reviews. That's always good. I mean, Take a Train came close. It's an auction game that needs a lot of work, but it did have some really cool ideas, and I liked the mix between all the different auctions and the set collection and kind of the push your luck and what kind of trains do you want in your thing. It's an interesting game. I like to see version 2.0 of it. Titus Tentacle. This is a game that my kids really enjoyed. It's a game for kids where you're hitting a device that shoots tentacles out. It might knock your ships. Other than that, it's roll and move, but for little kids, a lot of fun. Greedy Greedy Goblins from AEG. This is a speed style game where you're going to be turning over tiles and putting them in dungeons as fast as you can and then putting your goblin in to seal it. Hopefully you put a goblin in one that's going to get you points and not lose you points because too many sticks of dynamite will blow you up. A few sticks of dynamite, you can double your points or triple them. Fun, quick, and fast. Jurassic Attack. This is a two-player game. It's like a fancy version of War, but with big cards, some nice artwork, and just fun, symmetrical play back and forth as players are trying to outguess when the other person is playing their T-Rexes and the Apex Predator and when's the best time to win a thing. Some pretty cool back and forth, very fast game. Happy Salmon. This game is silliness personified as you are running around a table laughing and shouting as you play a game. It is a lot of fun to watch. It is a lot of fun to play. It's certainly not everyone's cup of tea, but it is mine. Happy Salmon. Jason and I took a look at Mombasa, which is like a stock market game set in Africa as trading companies move out. You are investing in the stock market. You are trying to get diamonds. You're essentially trying to get a lot of points, but this game has a neat hand management slash discard system that I haven't seen in any other game. I looked at the fourth game in the Android series, which was Android, Android Netrunner, and Android Infiltration. This one is Android Mainframe, which is an abstract strategy style game where you're trying to get different areas on a board. Works really well with two, three, and four players. Bastion is a cooperative tower defense game from Hobby World, but it looks a little bit like um, uh, Castle Assault, but it's not. It almost feels like ghost stories. Monsters keep coming in, you got to fight them off. It has a really neat resource allocation system in it. Animals on Board. This is an amazingly fun game from Stronghold Games in which you are taking a group of animals and then splitting them and then splitting them and splitting them until you get the animals on board. You don't want pairs because that's Noah's job. You want either a big group of animals or them in singlets and you're trying to get the most points. And then finally, Jason and I took a look back at Dominion, uh, which has been out for many years now. And we looked at kind of an overall look at Dominion and everything that's involved with that deck building game and giving our overall opinions. I also did a couple of my alphabet lists. I did the letter M and the, or I'm sorry, the letter N and the letter O, I believe. So you can go back and check those out. There was Board Game Blender. Lots of great stuff came out last week. I hope you enjoy that. Check out Board Game Breakfast and our videos that are coming out this week. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. This has been Week in Review, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.